In this video, we'll take a look at how to retrieve model dimensions from our IPTs and IAMs into our drawing environment so we can make modifications in the drawing side to affect the change on the modeling side. What I'm going to begin doing is right clicking on the view of any one of the orientations here I have of the model. From this, I can right click and choose a command called Retrieve Dimensions. So that's located right here in the Overflow menu. Now, that's also found in our Annotate tab on the retrieve command right here on the dimension panel. So we have the same command there. When I start this tool, I can select the view that I'd like. In this case, I want this particular view here. And I can start selecting features, which I would like to bring in dimensions for. As you can see, I can pick on these here. And as I select more features, more available dimensions become available. When I go up here and choose the select dimensions box, this is where I actually go through here and pick exactly which one I would like to keep. So I'm going to want to keep the 1.25. I'm going to keep the overall dimension. In fact, all these dimensions here are pretty good for me to keep. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those and say apply. While he's saying apply, it keeps me in the dialog box and confirms the ones I've already chosen. Since I don't have any more to select, now I can just hit cancel. I now have my dimensions that I can utilize for modifying the actual size of this unit. What you will notice though is some of the dimensions don't quite make sense. So like this 1.25 here, that was created by a rectangular pattern controlling the size spacing on the circular cutouts. This is a dimension that even though I could utilize its intelligence, doesn't really make a lot of sense when I start documenting. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete that one with my delete key. And I can still place these other ones, but I do need some more dimensions to help me space out and basically document that these are spaced evenly. Now I could come down here and put a typical behind the 6.3. So if I right click on that, I'll go here to my edit. And on text, I could put typical in here to show a typical spacing. But that doesn't make a lot of sense for here to here. Maybe that typical makes sense for down at the end. So retrieving model dimensions is not a silver bullet because normally we don't model the way we document. It's just not as practical as what you might think. I'm going to go ahead and actually delete this one here as well. Scoot this up a little bit. So you can move these around just like any other normal dimension that we're going to see. You can also retrieve model dimensions on your isometric views. So if I go up to this one, right click, retrieve dimensions. Scoot this out of the way there. I'll start selecting features. Now these dimensions here are ones that I did not already retrieve somewhere else in the model. I wouldn't say okay to those because I had deleted them. And this one over here was brand new. I didn't have a thickness on that yet. And I can still play with those and place them around. But again, you can retrieve dimensions for both orthographic views and ISO views. Now, when you're placing your initial base views, this functionality is also available to do that. So if I choose my base view command, one of my last options here is display options on this tab. Now, when I'm bringing a model in for the first time, I have the ability to select that all model dimensions should come in. So that way I can then just filter out what I don't want by deleting the erroneous dimensions that don't make sense. So this has been a look at retrieving dimensions. But again, just as a reminder, I can also right click on this and choose edit model dimension. That's how we can tell that this is a modeling dimension and not a drawing dimension.